Welcome back to DBL. Amber Hagerman was abducted and murdered in the 90s, and her case has never been solved. But it has helped save hundreds of missing children. On this special edition of DBL's True Crime Chronicles, we're taking you back to where it all began, how Amber Alerts came about. The video and stories you see here contain exclusive content from our affiliate WFAA in Dallas. Take a look. You see it pop up on your phone. You hear the noise, a few seconds of panic. It's an Amber Alert, warning you of an abducted child in your area. A crucial tool used today that wouldn't be here without a little girl named Amber. Amber was this little nine-year-old girl from Arlington, Texas, and she was a beautiful girl. A young girl whose tragic story dates back to 1996. It was January 13th. Amber and her younger brother, Ricky, went for a bike ride. Amber wanted to stay out longer, so Ricky went home. Her mom's like, where is, where's Amber? It's like, oh, I left her over there still riding um, near this grocery store parking lot. And so her mom, the mom said, go get her. Ricky rushed back to find his sister's bicycle, but not her. Arlington 911, what are you reporting? Yeah, I, I saw a, a black pickup and he grabbed a little girl and he took off toward town with her. Uh -huh. And she hollered. Amber was abducted. I just went crazy then. I just started going towards where my father said she was abducted at, screaming her name, but maybe for sure she would answer me. But there was never no answer, there was nothing. Officer Jesse Minton with Arlington PD remembers that night vividly. That night we had some information to be on the lookout for a black pickup truck. So officers were following every black pickup truck that moved in the city. I was telling the police, you know, you gotta find my little girl and you gotta do it now. We interrupt this program to bring you the following News 8 special report. We had been so close to the family that we were allowed in to the apartment as they're waiting for word. So we have video of them sitting on the couch. The body was Amber. And when they finally told me it was her, of course I didn't believe it. Autopsy reports revealed Amber had been alive for up to 48 hours before she was killed. They didn't want me to see her the way she was because she was damaged so much. Her body was cut so much and she just didn't look like Amber. A thunderstorm washed away much of the forensic evidence on Amber's body. There were no fingerprints left. Police worked tirelessly, but over time, no one was caught. I'm terrified to let my children outside. It wasn't so easy to get information to the public other than the newspaper or TV, which sometimes took hours. Now you have to remember back then, you know, there's no Facebook, there's MySpace doesn't happen until 2003. Uh, cell phones are a very expensive item that is normally mounted in your car. Police knew they needed another outlet, but what? A woman had called uh, Arlington PD right after Amber's um, death, and she says, why didn't we know more details? So that prompted everyone to get together, and radio broadcasters came up with the Amber Alert. There's been over 900 kids uh, that have been found and, and, and safely, safely brought back home uh, due to this system. A lot of people don't know there's actually a mnemonic that goes with Amber, America's Missing, um, emergency broadcast response. Police use the vehicle description or a license plate to alert the public. It sounds small, but the impact is huge. Reading that text can save a life, but Amber's parents knew they could do more. I'd also like to say uh, again, a special word of thanks to Richard Hagerman and Donna Whitson. They helped sign a bill into law that tracks national sex offenders. When this man took my daughter, he took my dreams, my best friend. I would never ever want another mother to have to go through what I have had gone through and, or another child be taken away. Almost 25 years later, Amber's case is still open. And I think that this happened because a stranger, a sexual predator, snatched this little girl off the streets of Arlington, off her little bike and murdered her and there was evidence of sex assault. Police continue to follow tips and leads and know someone out there knows something, something that can help bring justice and end the pain for Amber's family. Earlier, Eric and I spoke with Amber's mother, Donna Norris. She's sharing with us what these past 24 years have been like for her. Take a look. 
We have Donna Norris, Amber Hagerman's mother, here with us. Uh, Donna, thank you so much for coming on DBL. I, I, I can't even imagine what you must be going through now and what these past uh, couple of decades have been like for you. So, Donna, this January marks 25 years since Amber's death. What have the past few decades been like for you? They've been hard. I just really, really want justice for Amber, the horrible things that she went through and you know, our family's gone through and we're still going through. Donna, Amber's case is still open and it's been hard to crack because there's little DNA to work with. So what do you think it'll take to close this case or just find closure? Someone's seen something because when Amber was abducted, she was screaming bloody murder. She was screaming and doing everything that I have taught her when something bad does happen, to scream, to let people know that something's going wrong. And someone besides that elderly man heard her scream. Someone else did hear it. So for her to case to be solved, I think someone has to talk. Uh, I can't even get my words out. I just can't imagine. Um, Donna, Amber's legacy lives on through Amber Alerts. She is helping save missing children everywhere. So as of this May, 988 children have been saved to date with this program. How does it make you feel seeing that huge impact? It makes me feel wonderful, you know, knowing that we have the Amber Alert, which is a great tool against child molesters, child adductors. You know, you are so incredibly strong. And I mean, I'm absolute inspiration. You've gone through so much and then you went on to be a huge advocate for child safety. You helped sign a child protection bill into law with President George Bush and even helped create the National Sex Offender Registry List. Why is this so important to you? I just cannot fend on another child to go through what my child went through. And if I could do anything to stop that, I will. A lot of people will hear an Amber Alert or it'll go off on their phone and they may not think about the totality of what is happening in that moment. Can you speak to people who may be completely numb by the idea of this is just another alert on their phone as to what it's like for you to hear the Amber Alert? Just knowing if you hear the Amber Alert, just think of that child, if that child could be tortured, raped, uh, brutally murdered like my little girl and just think about that and if you could just help in just some little way and look around where you're at and it would help a whole lot and it will save a child's life. I want to thank you for your selflessness, your strength, your advocacy um, because you are directly saving um, lives. So Thank you for coming on DBL. Thank you for having the courage to talk about this. To learn more DBL Nation about Amber's story and Amber Alerts, please visit the link below, amberalert.ojp.gov. Thank you, Donna. I'm sending you, we are sending you a big hug. Thank you so much.